Well, why don't we you give it up for uh, Stand Up for Equality and Equality Days and Denise and Candace and thanks for all your hard work in making this a reality. Um, I also want to thank everybody here for, for coming tonight. Um, just by the fact that you're here shows that you're committed, you're dedicated, you have a vision for a more just state, one that states every one, every one of its citizens with equal dignity and with equal respect. And we know that in our hearts, we live that day to day. Um, where the rubber hits the road is in, 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 um, is in public policy making. And that's where we can hopefully transform our values of dignity and respect and equality into public policy. And so um, the workshop tonight is geared towards kind of a generic view of lobbying in, you know, at the legislative, the state level. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, communications. How do we talk about this stuff in a way that is going to uh, make a difference with our audience and the people we're trying to reach? And then we'll also talk about certain bills that are up right now. Communications, how do we talk about this stuff in a way that is going to uh, make a difference with our audience and the people we're trying to reach? And then we'll also talk about certain bills that are up right now that affect our community. Just going to do really quick go over some ground rules or rules of engagement, whatever, just so we can have some uh, uh, maximum results in our two to two and a half hours together. One is to try and move things forward. Some things we're going to talk about tonight, um, maybe not everybody's going to agree with. That's fine. We're not looking for unanimity. We're not looking for everybody to be lockstep. We're looking for a good, robust discussion. So just kind of move the discussion forward and saying, you know, what you said really sucks and here's 17 reasons why. That's kind of, it doesn't move the discussion forward. We're going to assume everybody in here has really good intentions and is operating from their best intentions. We're going to try and stretch a little bit and try to open up some minds here, our own minds, even as we're trying to open up the minds of our opposition, we're going to check our minds as well. And then, I don't know, active listening it says. So we're going to try and do uh, active listening. Active listening, we're going to be working in some pairs and some groups a little bit. Um, just basically listen to what your partner's saying, listen to what the person speaking is saying, um, as opposed to what I tend to do quite a bit, which is when you're talking to me in a group, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to react to what you're saying so that you'll understand how smart I am. And instead, I don't listen to what you're saying, and I miss that beauty. I miss your, your, your information. And then uh, my favorite's always when in deep, uh, when in doubt, take a deep breath, or when in deep, take a deep doubt. But um, <laughs> we will always do, I mean, taking deep breaths, is, it's kind of like dental floss. It's probably the cheapest, simplest, easiest way you can do to maintain good balance. All right. So, um, I don't like to snap. What we'll do, uh, um, I'd like you just now <laughs> right, to uh, break up into threes right now. You know, through or twos, whatever you want, and uh, just talk for a couple minutes about any experience you've had with lobbying. If you haven't had experiences with lobbying, I'm sure you've talked to other people about your experiences as a straight ally or a lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender individual, and what your experience has been talking to them about equality, um, about your life. So uh, just go ahead and uh, so about lobbying or talking to anybody about equality, go ahead, break up into threes. Agenda, how to lobby 101, a little bit about messaging and how to talk to, how, about LGBT issues with lawmakers and the media. And then, you know, probably won't happen, but it's always good to, to be aware of this stuff. Sometimes there's some tension, confrontational moments, things like that. A little bit about how to deal with that. I'd like you to talk about your experiences more. And then any other concerns. And, and throughout this, we'll also be talking about specific bills that are being heard right now that impact our community. So the first is to uh, know what the political process is and know what the political lay of the land is. And so there's kind of how a bill becomes a law, which is the political process. And you've got, your, you've got that in your packets. And then there's also the political lay of the land, and that is somewhat complicated sometimes. It changes a lot depending on who you talk to. Um, so it's just really good to have your own, um, uh, to talk to a lot of people, develop your own analysis, 
bounce that off of other folks and figure out what is really happening in the legislature that impacts our, our bills. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit more about that in a minute. The other thing is to really know what your own motivations are and know whether you're in this just for the short term, the long haul, what you're willing to fall on your sword for, what you're willing to compromise for. And that really comes from knowing what your own values are and really knowing what motivates you. And, you know, it's the, the art of war. Know yourself, know your enemy. A thousand battles and a thousand victories. So our community has had some victories over the past, few, you know, decade and a half or so. It hasn't all been a uh, equality wasteland out there. 1995, Nevada was the 13th state to pass comprehensive hate crimes that, that included uh, sexual orientation. 1997, Senator Lori Lippman Brown introduced a bill to repeal the sodomy law. She paid a price for that. She lost her election uh, one year later. 1999 was the Employment Non-Discrimination Act. It feeds that uh, a lot of people in this room and, and, and elsewhere worked really hard on that. The end of bill was, is a good case study because it uh, meant that it wasn't just up uh, to the queer community to get that legislation passed. Now, certainly many people who were LGBT worked on that issue, but we also build allies. And having allies is gonna be really important as we move this stuff forward. And so we can't do it on our own. In terms of the um, political process, you have your how a, bill, how a bill becomes a law, kind of what we all dreaded in civics class. And then we also you know, have this 120 day session. And what that means is that there's deadlines. There's a lot of deadlines. Friday is the deadline, for example, that unless you have your bill passed out of committee by Friday, that bill is dead. And so nerves are really frayed. Everybody in every interest group and just about every legislator has their one bill that they're really trying hard to move out of committee. And so it's, um, uh, it's a very frenzied time. Um, the next big deadline is going to be coming up the day before Equality Days, which is that bill has to pass out of the House of Origin. So if there's a bill introduced to the Senate and it passes in the Senate committee, it has to pass out of the Senate in order for it not to be dead. So any bill that's even passed out of uh, the Senate committee or the Assembly committee that does not pass by the full House by April 21st is, is dead. Um, the political climate, uh, so those deadlines means things are very frenzied. It means that there's a lot of pressure, a lot of tension, things like that. You know, back in, you know, anyway, I won't, uh, so we won't go back in the old days, but it was different as, you know, somebody might have said a long time ago, but it was, uh, things were a lot more easy, and, um, but now it's, it's really rapid. Now, the political climate, uh, the Senate this time, is, is, is everybody knows, is uh, 12 Democrats to uh, nine Republicans. The committees each have seven members. They have a majority Democrat on it. Uh, assembly is 28 to 14. That's two-thirds Democrat. It means it's a, a veto-proof majority in the assembly. Those committees are made up of between 11 and 14 people with pretty much overwhelming you know, just, just a little bit of minority representation from the uh, Republicans.